One of the cool new features in Betaflight 4.5 is now the raw gyro data and RPM data from your motors is automatically recorded. You don't have to set a debug for it. That really opens the door for any log that you receive going forward once everybody's on Betaflight 4.5 to really ascertain additional information that's just directly there and you don't have to worry about if somebody's set in a debug mode. And in the past, you always had to choose, do you want raw gyro data or RPM data from your motors? I think this will really open the door for people to understand how much delay their motors really have and how much that is impacting their flight performance. Also, it will certainly help understand if you have a desync or not. So let's take a closer look at those two things and see how much motor delay we really get on a five inch quadcopter versus like a 10 inch. And then also, how do we detect with this new data, how can we easily detect when you have a desync and it just spells it right out for you. The first things first, how do you set this up? And there's really nothing to set up. That's what's so great about it. In the latest version of Black Box Explorer, which you would download, and I'll put a link down below for Betaflight 4.5, you will see it now has this data included drop down here, and you'll see right in there, RPM and unfiltered gyro. Now, if you wanted to get a little extra mileage out of, maybe you have onboard flash, it's only eight meg or something like that. You can go in and uncheck some of these things that if you're not looking for altitude data or battery data or GPS data, things of that nature, you can get rid of some of these things. Now, if you don't have those, or if you don't want the RPM data or unfiltered gyro, and it will make that black box space on your limited flash that you may have just last that little extra longer. You will also notice up here at the top that this debug mode is now set to none and you'll still get that unfiltered gyro data and the RPM data. You can always go into here and select something that's you know more creative that uh, you might wanna compare. For example, uh, the RPM data, which I'm gonna show you in a second, actually shows you where the uh, RPM notch filters, what Hertz they'll be at. We can also select this FFT frequency, which will also then show you where the dynamic notch filters are at any given moment. So you can now see both of those at the same time. You could never do that before. It was either one or the other. And just for clarity, the unfiltered gyro data is the same thing as if you would select the gyro scaled black box debug mode. And the RPM data is the same thing you see here as the D-Shot RPM telemetry. Not to be confused with the ESC sensor RPM data. That's the RPM data coming from the ESC um, through <laughs> the telemetry wire, which is, is not the same thing. So you can actually now compare the two to see how delayed and why we have to use D-Shot uh, RPM telemetry to get the RPM data from the motors and how much faster it is versus getting the motor RPMs through the ESC data, the, the same data that tells you the ESC temperature and things of that nature. So you can actually look at those. You could, you could get a debug mode of this and then compare that against the RPM data that it's automatically recording now. So a bunch of cool things you can geek out on if that's something you're into, which yeah. I'm, I'm going to be looking at that. So as a result of this change, I've added and I've changed my black box templates, which you can go download right now. If you go to theuavtech.com, again, link down below, you can browse down to black box right here. Click on that. And on this page, you just browse down to right here where we see the UAV Tech Black Box Explorer 3.7, which you can use in other versions as well, but this has the RPM data. Note you have to right click on this and hit save link as, and then save it to your computer. And then from there, you open it up in your, whatever version of Black Box Explorer you have, and just hit open, and then open that trace template, and then it will load it up. Once it's loaded, you can just select the different trace templates right here. The one we're gonna be looking at right now is the stick tracking. So now that this information is gonna be available in every log, how can we quickly use this data to ascertain if we had any desyncs during a flight, or if we think we might be having a desync for whatever reason, because I do get to questions asked quite a bit yet uh, through this new RPM data. Well, it's pretty straightforward and easy in this trace template. Again, number four here is loaded. We can see here, and you can just kind of dissect this a little bit. So we can see in the past, the telltale sign was that one of your motors would command 100%. And that is fair and accurate. That is, you know, a, a way to detect if you had a desync. But now we have an additional information on top of that where we can actually get back the reported RPM data. So you can see right here that motor two in this highlighted trace template is commanding 100% throttle. And the reason it's doing that is because motor two down here is not giving a lot of RPMs. It's ramping up. It's trying to kick up and start up and ramp up here. Um, but you know, where it's commanding 100%, it's nowhere near 100%. 
And if you see something like that, that's a desync and that's an ESC setting issue. And if you have something like that and you're trying to get that solved, I'll make a video card link to the upper right, how you can solve desyncs in five minutes. Check that out. Uh, you implement those settings. If that doesn't fix it, it is most likely your ESC. That's the problem. You can swap the ESC and try it, but check out the software things first. Are to your motor performance. And in this one, we're gonna take out this 10 inch and see how long it actually takes for the motors to spin up after the commands are given. So to do that, we can simply look down here and just compare some traces. We'll just use this one, for example. So we're gonna look here at when motor number three was targeting its you know, highest peak for RPM. And when did the motor actually get to that peak RPM? So we're gonna go ahead and hit the M for mark point, and then we can slide over. And you can see that we're talking a whopping 70 milliseconds it took for that motor to actually spin up after that command came in here. So if you have degraded flight performance wobbles and things like that, and you see something like that, there's your problem. That is your core issue. And that's really what makes big quadcopters fly and are they're difficult to tune. They have a lot of wobbling issues, hence why people want to tune those. It's, it's almost all the time, it's this, that your motors aren't powerful enough. Uh, the props are too heavy for them. They're just, you need a bigger motor size for the rig. Uh, it doesn't matter how heavy the craft is, like weight wise, and how much matters, how much moment of inertia it has and how heavy that prop is. A three bladed 10 inch prop can be pretty heavy to get to spin up and slow down pretty quick. So of course you can do things in the tune to make that better. And of course you can adjust filter settings to make your prop wash better. But when your motors have a 70 millisecond delay in them for spinning up and slowing down, that's, that's a pretty good ramp too. Keep that in mind. That was going from something like zero, you know, command all the way up to, uh, I don't know, uh, 80%, 90%. So, you know, it's a pretty good ramp there. So obviously smaller changes in RPM are gonna uh, happen a lot faster and the motors will be able to respond a lot faster. But it is an interesting fact point that now you can see when you're helping somebody out or looking at your own thing of how f how well your motors are actually doing. And should you, if, if you want better flight performance, just get bigger motors or lighter props. Now conversely, let's check out what a five inch is. So this is a, a five inch quad right here. I can show it real quick with the magical see-through props. You can see through those props in there. Anyways, uh, that's this quad, freestyle quad. Um, you know, pretty decent motors on it. I think it has uh, RC and power, WAFs motors, 22.6 by 6.5, 2720 kV. So on these and any motor, when you see this kind of ramping like that, that is essentially it, you know, trying to ramp up to full speed. That's essentially the motor ramp um, that has to deal. It's kind of the, the feel part they talk about, like the shape of that is kind of what you're seeing of how these motors actually spin up and ramp out. Um, but at this point right here, close enough, we're saying it's 100% throttle command and where it actually gets to 100% throttle or up to that is about 41 milliseconds. Again, that's ramping from zero all the way to 100, but it's about half uh, of the time it was taken on that 10 inch. This one here, you can see it took it about 31 milliseconds. So a lot of times when you see this uh, in a log, you know, we were always showing, you know, that basically that is your motor saturated. It's, it can't keep up. And that's why you have this delay, which I have my, uh, my settings wrong here. Cause I went back from airplane to uh, quadcopter and I didn't up the packet rate. But anyways, this gap here is not a tuning issue. It's this motor saturation issue. And then with this new RPM data, now you can actually see just, I don't know, it just helps put it all together. You can actually see that, oh yeah, it's commanding 100%, but my motors are still working to ramp up. It's taking about 31 milliseconds in this case between here and the peak here. Now, again, as you have prop wash and other conditions, that is smaller changes in the motor, so it's not gonna take that as long, but you can, again, check that kind of stuff out for your quad and kind of, I don't know, it's just another piece of information out there that's always going to be available when you're helping people in logs or taking out your own logs. And it's pretty cool. And how you can then compare now and do some other things with some of the uh, debug mode stuff. So hopefully this was helpful for how to better detect desyncs, what that new data is in correlation to some of the older debug modes, which are still there. 
and it opens up the door to making it a little broader known of you know motor performance and seeing that on every log whereas before it was always oh get this special debug which nobody used to really run because you would always run uh, unfiltered gyro data because that was more important so you had to pick so we never had the rpm data unless you really look for something now it's just going to always be there which is pretty cool and i think again we'll open the door to people checking out uh, their motor performance uh, a little bit more acutely and uh, making adjustments, getting new motors, bigger motors, does it make a difference? You know, things like that. And comparing some of this motor testing, you know, instead of just static bench tests, thrust tests, you know, people could put it on their quads and fly it and then compare the logs and, and see the difference between, you know, actual performance for it ramping up and things of that nature in a dynamic scenario. As always, if you thought this information was helpful, hit the like button down below. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you in the next one.